How's it going guys? I'm Dustin and today I want to talk about how you're going to figure out your seam allowance when doing a sewing project. Give me a minute, I gotta do some cleaning. Alright guys, sorry about that mess. I've been doing a little few different uh, hobbies lately, including some like metal detecting and things like that. And then one of the things I got into most recently is uh, resin art, okay? Doing things with resin, such as uh, these rings, which are going to actually be turned into pendant necklaces instead of rings, because I'm not big on the, I'm wearing them as actual rings. I'm going to focus, so they turned out pretty neat. Um, I'm doing like, a comb right now that's all stone, um, individual gems, which are then coated in resin. Because because stone and gems will actually look different if they're not polished or if they're not cleared. So, today I want to talk about um, seam allowances and how you figure out your seam allowances and uh, f you know how you can do it for your machines so you're not just guessing. Every time we put out a video doing something with templating, or when you see videos of people doing templates, the question comes up, how do you figure out what to use as a seam allowance? What's the appropriate seam allowance? You know, what should you be using? And there are ways where you can, you know, simply take a measurement. Some people say, oh, just use a quarter inch, just use whatever. And that works, okay? But you still need to know where to be able to sew it. For some people, that means trying to look at where the needle's landing and trying to figure out where to sew it. Um, but I don't think that's the best option. Now, usually, and by usually, I mean, I just seen it the other day, and I don't know where it went. I have a little piece that's sitting around here that shows my seam allowances on the left side and the right side of my foot. Since I don't know where that is, it's great for you guys because we're going to make a new one, okay? Now, what we're talking about here is on your machine, the foot... The outside walking foot, you should be using a walking foot machine for a lot of these uh, vinyl and leather pro um, projects, or, you know, just the outside foot on any machine, um, where that lands relative to the needle. Okay, that's going to tell you what you need to add to your templates or your projects as a seam allowance. As a matter of fact, I'll pull over this little portable machine right here, okay? So you have your... Um, foot which this is just a fabric machine so it doesn't have an inside walking foot it just has the outer foot okay so we're talking about the distance from the side of the foot to the needle itself or this side of the foot to the needle itself now i should add that this isn't the only way to sew with a seam allowance this isn't the only way to um sew from the edge of the material to the needle um there are attachments you can use okay there's magnetic attachments that i've seen that go you know stick to the to your, the base of your machine itself and it has an arm that comes over and uh it allows you to set a seam allowance if you look there's actually a little marking of tape on my machine um that marking used to run all the way back and that was my uh quarter inch seam allowance but what you need to do is you need to figure out you as a sewer what you want to use for your seam allowance how you want to be able to see and determine that and it's important so I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna grab a piece of scrap real quick, okay? And I'm gonna show you why it's so important. So when you're sewing, you need to line up the edges of your material, right? You put your color, your faces, or the design you want together towards each other, and you need to uh, sew from the edge, okay? So you need to decide where you're going to line up this edge to. It's true that if you had it marked, you could try to run it down where the needle's at, and that's easier on one of these little portable machines where you can see down inside of there where the needle is, and they give you a guideline that shows you where that straight stitch is on the foot, but for something like a walking foot, it becomes a lot more difficult. You have an outside and an inside foot. So we're going to, we need to figure out what distance is easiest to sew from the edge of your foot over to the center, because the edge of the foot is very easy to follow. Okay, it's close enough to the needle that as you do curves, as you do weird shapes, it works. So we're gonna make a template. So the first thing you need to do is make a small square piece like this. Just make a small square piece that you're going to be able to find. If you have scraps of a bright color, like an orange or a yellow, 
use that because it's easy to find inside your drawers. Okay, you can also do these little sample pieces if you're not sure about things like the stitch length on your machine and so on. You should have some of these pieces out there. Now the first thing you want to do is you could technically do your measurement from the edge to the stitch, but I find it easier to run a straight line first. So I'm going to come over here to my machine and I'm just going to toss this down, make sure my machine's on, make sure everything is oiled. If you don't know, even the self-oiling machine such as this one, you need to get yourself a little bit of oil. There are red coated dots around the machine that you need to put oil in, okay? Keep things oiled up. It's an expensive machine. So the first thing I want to do is, is just sew a straight line. I don't really care, you know, where it sits on the, on the project. Just sew a straight line. Okay, I, so now I'm going to pull this off. Grab my snipping shears and shabam. Go over here and shabam. I'm doing this quick, guys, so my line's not even the straightest you've ever seen in your life, right? That's a curvy straight line. So here's what we're going to do. Take your Sharpie or whatever marking you have sitting next to you. I'm going to use a Sharpie. And I'm going to put an R. Or let's just write the word right. Okay, this is talking about what it's like on the right side of the foot. We're now going to sew down that line that we just sewn. Take your time. Line it up with the edge of your machine. I'm going to go off the edge of that. Work it out. Shabam. Again, trim off your end. Now we're going to go in here. We're going to write the word left. Now we're going to sew on this side of the foot, the left side of the foot. All right. Again, I'm doing this quick, so my lines aren't the straightest. My machine's actually not adjusted for this material right now, but that's okay. Um, I was sewing some other things, but that's not the point of this video, right? So, we have our right side of our foot and our left side of our foot. You see how those are not equal? This is why it's important to know this, okay? Because now, if you decide to sew off the edge of your foot or off your seam allowance, you can use this measurement on your templating. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, if you don't have one of these little bitty six inch uh, see-through whisk or Westcott rulers, get yourself one. These are amazing to have around um, because they're easy to add a seam allowance. So let's just say, pull out this here template. Okay, now I'm not going to have a piece of material big enough for the template, so this is just an example. Let's say you pull out this here template, okay? And you come over to our piece of material. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and trace out our, our template onto our material. Okay, we're going to make sure everything stays flat, and so on and so forth. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's get you aimed down a little more. Okay, so we have our little t piece templated out. Now what we need to do is take our reference piece, this left and right, and decide are we going to sew on the left side or the right side of the foot. I like to sew on the right side of the foot quite personally. So I'm going to come up here with this ruler and uh, one little trick that somebody told me a long time ago was instead of going off the side of the ruler and trying to measure in, it helps to go off one inch and measure in sometimes. Sometimes. What I have is three eighths. Okay, has three eighths of an inch from the right side of my foot to the needle. So, what you can do, instead of fighting with this, is you go to your three eighths of an inch, and you start to go around and mark marking it. Now, this is the reason that I like these see-through rulers, okay? Because once you see where three eighths of an inch is on there, you kind of just cruise through this, okay? Now, what I'm doing, so that way you know, holding this up on edge. Um, it's just easier for me to see where 3 8 is if I hold it up on edge, and I can mark down the edge. If it's a completely straight piece, of course you can measure your front and back 3 8 put it up there and mark it out. Um, but I like to go through and mark more than that, okay? 
especially with your curves, all curves need to be marked at a 90 degree to the, to the edge. So you need to make sure when you're coming around these curves, you, know, you are perfectly 3 eighths of an inch. So let's mark this out real quick. This is just an example, right? So you come around here and get all this marked out. That's your 3 eighths, right? We know that's the right side of the foot. So if we take this over to our machine right now, if we bring this over the machine and we sew down, uh, let's get over here, get you over here. So if we bring this over the machine right now, we know that our seam allowance or what we added to our templating is three eighths of an inch for the right side of our foot. So come over to the right side of your foot and sew it, right? Of course, you need to watch your corners if you're doing something that isn't sewn off the edge, right? We all know about that. Lift it up and find your corner. But now if you sewed around this, utilizing your seam allowance and the right side of your foot, remember that when you sew curves, you sew off of where the needle is at the foot, not the front of the foot. Oh, I went a little wide. And you will be able to see that, right? You'll absolutely see where I went wide on that. So. Not bad. Come in here, snip these off. Now we see very easily that by following our seam allowance drawn line, by following this outside line, when we sewed along the right side of the foot, it covers up our line that we added from our templating, okay? So that's what this is for. You create that little template so that way you can measure the right side and the left side to understand your seam allowance. So now that you know that that 3 eighths on the right side of your machine is in fact the uh, measurement that you need for the right side of your foot, go get yourself a little piece of tape. We all should have tape laying around, okay? Take your little piece of tape and write with a marker, a pen, a pencil. Write is three eighths of an inch or whatever, you know, is standard measurement for your country or your region, um, whether that's millimeters or whatever. Write your right to three eighths of an inch. And over here on this right side of the machine that doesn't ever get used for anything other than storage of dumb things, put yourself a piece of tape there. It says right is three eighths of an inch. So now as you're doing all of your templating, you know, say you do want to go down that right side of the machine. And the reason I use the right side so often, the right side of that foot, is uh, because you have all of this table over here. And if you have a table off the end, um, it's very easy to put, you know, large canvases and so on down the edge of the table. But you'll know that you always need three eighths of an inch for this, this style of, um, you know, using seam allowances. Now the reason I like this so much is for this right here. Not that you'll always be in this situation, but you see how it didn't matter that I had this long tail on the end because I was able to follow my line. Um, for some projects you need that sort of thing. For something like pleating or sewn designs, you need to know how far off from the right side that is. Now in the past, for pleating and sewn designs, I have taken an in inside foot and sliced it so that way I could see the needle itself. That does help, but this is so much easier and it works, okay? This is something that works easily, okay? It's easy, it's simple, it works. You follow the seam allowance that you add from your templating before you cut your material. So you'll, you'll template, add your seam allowance, and then you'll cut it out. And then you can sew it and it'll work every time. So I hope this helps answer any questions that people are having about what seam allowance do I use? What seam allowance do I add? Now it is true that on projects where we're doing something like a French seam or top stitching or whatever you want to call it, um, we do add, okay? I do, you know, a half inch if I'm going to do something like that. So that way I have enough on the bottom to open it up, add a, a support backing or and sew that from the top, okay? But in that, you know, that's a special case and I can take my time and do other things or other forms of seam allowance with that. That's why I had that green piece of tape here, okay? Now, I've, I've taken the tape off since then, but I'm talking about this little piece here. As a matter of fact, up here's the scrap from when I took it off the other day. Um, it just simply started to lift, and it was getting, you know, interfering with my project, so I took it off at the time. 
but those are special cases and honestly you know in those cases you go grab your, your piece of tape here you rip off the piece you you put your line back down or your seam allowance you sew a test quick to show yep that is a half inch and you go over to your piece and you start templating again that way that we measured to know the left and right side of our foot that will work with any you know line that you put down any any you know alignment anything like that i have seen in the past where people have just taken a sharpie on old machines and you see marks and marks and marks going across the machine so they know different distances but you need to figure out what the distances you're going to use are okay my big ones are three eighths from my right side of my foot and uh, I, I believe it's a quarter to the left side of my foot, but three eighths and a half inch. And a half inch, like I said, is for those top stitch situations where I want to do something nice or reinforced. Obviously, your material does play a big role in this. If you have a material that frays or is known to fall apart, you're going to want to add to that. Okay, so say something like a, say something like a weaved material for like boat covers and so on. Obviously, you need to hot knife those. You need to make sure that those edges aren't going to fray in the first place. But if you want to do like something like a half inch, it is just okay. I mean, that's acceptable, okay? So this is how you figure out your seam allowance. Do this, figure out your machine, figure out your setup, and when you start doing this, uh, you'll get comfortable with it, okay? It's just a method to figure out where to start, and then you figure out what you like after that. So uh, I'm Dustin. Thank you for watching our video. And uh, get out there and build cool things. And most importantly, have a good day.